Chapter 1 Rebirth You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the dark room Qin Xing opened her eyes. She could still feel the sharp pain in her heart. Not long ago, there was a knife stab there. She could not forget the feeling of the sharp blade piercing into her heart. The dense pain drilled into her heart and pierced into her bone marrow. Lying on the ground, her blood kept flowing out. It was getting harder and harder for her to breathe. The last person she saw was Qin Churu, who was also lying on the ground with her eyes wide open. Qin Churu was dead. Qin Xing pulled out a knife from her heart and stabbed it at her, choosing to die together with her. Qin Churu was once Qin Xing's younger sister, and she was also the person she trusted the most in this world. However, it was her who squeezed out all of her value and wanted her life in the end. Qin Churu had used her to get close to Fu Hanchuan. She had used her to become a master painter. She had used her to become a movie queen. She had used her to develop the Qin real estate into one of the top 500 companies in the world. Qin Churu had taken all the glory in her arms. On the surface, she appeared innocent and harmless, but everything she had done had put Qin Xing to death. Jealous of her talent in painting, Qin Churu used a trick to break her hand. In the end, Qin Sheng had no value. Qin Churu had poisoned her food and water with slow dot acting poison. Every time Qin Sheng recalled something, her hand would grab tightly onto the bedsheet, and her heart was filled with monstrous hatred. Qin Churu had destroyed her, stolen her family, and taken everything from her. What about now? Wasn't she dead? Why was she still living here? Was it Qin Churu who saved her and wanted to torture her again? Qin Xing calmed down. No, Qin Churu would never save her. She had also killed Qin Churu, and Qin Churu was dead. Only then did Qin Xing take a good look at the surroundings. The dilapidated brick house, the moldy quilt, and a bed that was not even tall enough for her were very familiar. Foam family. Perhaps it was because she had not spoken for a long time, but Qin Xing's voice was a little hoarse. She clutched her heart. She would never forget this place for the rest of her life. Because she had once lived in this house for 17 years. Everything that had happened here had become a nightmare that she would never forget for the rest of her life. Why would she come back here now? Qin Sheng's brows were tightly furrowed. At this moment, an impatient female voice appeared at the door. Damn girl! Why aren't you up yet? Let me tell you, if you make your sister wait for too long, I will not let you off. Shen Mei wore an apron and walked in. When she saw Qin Xing sitting on the bed, Shen Mei became even angrier. Why aren't you up yet? You have a fever and have been lying on the bed for two days. Do you really think you are a young miss? Bah, you are just a cheap slut that I torture. Qin Sheng was running a fever. Shen Mei couldn't bear to part with the money she had to pay the doctor to get the medicine, so she let Qin Sheng sleep on the bed for two days. Shen Mei wiped her hands on the apron on her body. She's already here. Hurry up and clean up, Lo hearing this, Qin Sheng's heart sank, and her face turned cold. It seemed that she had been reborn, back to the day she was brought back to the Qin family. Seeing that Qin Xing had not moved, Shen Mei became impatient. Are you still waiting for me to serve you? A burning smell came from the kitchen. My fish. The Fong family was very poor. Shen Mei had to count her days and eat fish every day. It was considered a relatively luxurious thing. At this moment, the fish was burnt. Shen Mei blamed it on Qin Sheng. You wretched girl, you're really unlucky. Nothing good has happened to you ever since you came to my house. Shen Mei left while cursing. Qin Sheng got up from the bed. It had been two days since she had eaten anything. There was meat, vegetables, and white rice on the table in the living room. Qin Sheng couldn't finish a bowl of rice after eating. During the 17 years she had been in the Fong family, Shen Mei was reluctant to give her food. 
her stomach capacity was already very small. Even if she starved for two days, she could only eat a bowl of white rice. A man in a suit walked in and asked, Is it done? Shen Mei had already scooped up the fish. When she heard the man's words, she walked out of the kitchen and smiled apologetically. Right away. Once the man left, Shen Mei glared at Qin Xing again. Damn girl, hurry up. Qin Xing did not want to stay in the Feng family either. She returned to her room and simply packed her things. She didn't have many things, so it didn't take long for her to pack them up. Shen Mei and the others were already waiting outside the courtyard. When Qin Xing walked out, Shen Mei fiercely warned, You wretched girl, when you return to the Qin family, you must treat your sister well. If it wasn't for her, you wouldn't have been able to return to the Qin family either. If she tells you to go east, you mustn't go west. Do you understand? Chapter 2 Return to H City You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. As Shen Mei spoke, she was about to twist Qin Sheng's arm when Qin Sheng swept a cold glance at her. Shen Mei was afraid and withdrew her hand. She frowned. This Qin Sheng had rebelled against the heavens, hadn't she? She pointed at Qin Sheng and cursed again. A hint of impatience flashed across Qin Sheng's eyes. She directly twisted Shen Mei's middle finger and said faintly, You don't have the right to scold me. Shen Mei was in so much pain that her face twisted. She shouted at Qin Sheng, Damn girl, do you want to rebel? Don't think that just because you're the young miss of the Qin family, I can't control you. The scream was ear dot piercing. Qin Sheng dug her ear and let go of her. She bent down slightly and laughed softly beside Shen Mei's ear. Don't worry. I will settle everything with you, including your good daughter, for how your family has treated me all these years. After saying that, she took out a piece of candy, tore open the candy wrapper, put the white candy into her mouth, and got into the car. Damn girl, you've rebelled against the heavens, haven't you? You're really an ingrate. I've raised you for so many years, but you actually spoke to me like this. If it weren't for me, you would have gone to God knows where long ago. Shen Mei was shocked by Qin Xing's words, when she came back to her senses, she let out another round of curses, her saliva flying everywhere. Drive. Qin Xing ordered. She had long gotten used to Shen Mei's beating and scolding. She had never known why her parents would hate her. It was only after she was brought back that she realized that she wasn't their biological daughter. She and Qin Churu's identities were swapped. Qin Churu enjoyed her status as the eldest daughter of the Qin family while she was tortured in the countryside. After she was brought back, her so called biological parents only saw Qin Churu as their only daughter. The funny thing was that she had been humbly begging them to give her a little bit of love. Even the little bit of warmth that Qin Churu had released, she had tried her best to keep it. Qin Xing sat in the car, looking at the scenery outside the window that was constantly retreating. The corners of her lips curled up slightly, her eyes filled with coldness. It wouldn't happen again. She would never be blinded by this ridiculous warmth in the future. Qin Churu, I'm back. When Qin Xing returned to the Qin family. The Qin family was eating dinner around the table. The butler brought Qin Xing in and the three members of the Qin family fell silent for a moment. Lin Shuya sized up Qin Sheng. When she saw her outfit, she frowned. Sister. Qin Churu was the first to react. A smile appeared on her face. She put down her chopsticks and walked up to Qin Sheng intimately. She wanted to hold Qin Sheng's arm, but Qin Sheng avoided her. Her refusal was very obvious. Qin Churu's face was stiff, but she quickly adjusted herself. Sister, you must be hungry. Come and have dinner. After that, she ordered the servants, bring a set of bowls and chopsticks for sister. Qin Xing glanced at the dining table. Apparently, they had forgotten that she was coming back today. A hint of mockery flashed in her eyes. 
Qin Xing walked over and sat down on the chair. Qin Churu picked up a piece of meat for Qin Sheng. Sister, eat more. It's rare for you to have such delicious food in the countryside. Qin Hai also said, Shenger, this place is not like your countryside. You have to get used to the life in H city quickly. Qin Hai had no affection for Qin Sheng, this daughter that he had just picked up. The reason he picked her up was to marry her to a family of equal status and strengthen the power of the Qin family. When he saw Qin Sheng, the disdain in his eyes was obvious. As expected, she had come from the countryside and could not make a name for herself. He did not expect Qin Sheng to have much success. Qin Sheng ignored the hypocritical father dot daughter pair. She looked at the food in the bowl and frowned. She pushed the bowl aside, stood up, and walked into the kitchen to get another bowl. Chapter 3 Stocks You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Sister Qin Churu bit her lower lip, feeling wronged. Qin Xing glanced at Qin Churu and spat out lightly, dirty. Pa! Qin Hai threw his chopsticks on the table. Qin Sheng, do you have any manners? I'm a person who doesn't have parents to teach me. Of course, my manners aren't that good. Qin Xing didn't want to build a good relationship with the Qin family. In her previous life, throwing her dignity on the ground and letting them step on it wouldn't change their sincerity. In their eyes, there was only profit. This time, she came back to stir up the peace in the Qin family. You. Qin Hai's face alternated between green and white. Qin Sheng was in a good mood as she ate her food. Seeing Qin Sheng's appearance, Qin Hai stood up abruptly. He had lost his appetite and walked upstairs. Shenger, look at how angry your father is. Lin Shuya glared at Qin Sheng. Immediately, her gaze fell on Qin Churu, and her gaze softened. Churu, your sister doesn't know manners. Help mommy teach her. Okay, mommy. Qin Churu answered obediently. Thank you for your hard work. Lin Shuya was satisfied. She nodded and went upstairs. She also didn't like Qin Sheng. But after all, she was her daughter, so she couldn't show it clearly. Sister, you're done eating. I'll take you shopping. Your clothes. Speaking of this, Qin Churu thought of how she looked when she first met Qin Sheng. Her upper body was a white tee dot shirt with a simple jacket over it. Her lower body was a pair of jeans that had been washed until they were white. Her legs were straight and slender. It was a very simple outfit, but it could not hide Qin Xing's elegance and temperament. Qin Churu looked at Qin Xing seriously. Her hair fell down and her eyes were bright. Although her face was young, it was unusually exquisite. It was not difficult to see her alluring appearance in the future. She secretly bit her lip. Before this, she did not think much of Qin Sheng. She was just from the countryside. How could she compare to the young miss of the Qin family who had received an aristocratic education since she was young? But now, her alarm bells were ringing. That face and that seemingly innate temperament, no one would think that she was just a peasant. Even if she stood in front of her, she would be inferior. She absolutely could not let Qin Sheng take away her things. Qin Churu adjusted her state of mind and said gently, I will help sister dress up properly. Qin Sheng took a tissue and wiped her mouth. She said with a faint smile, Qin Churu, now that Qin Hai and Lin Shuya are not here, you don't have to pretend with me. Being suddenly exposed, Qin Churu was only 17 years old. Her thoughts were not hidden so deep. In an instant, her face twisted, and she could no longer maintain the good impression she wanted to show to Qin Sheng. When Qin Sheng passed by Qin Churu, her footsteps paused. What doesn't belong to you will never belong to you, Qin Sheng. Qin Churu gritted her teeth. In their eyes, I am the only daughter. I am the only miss of the Qin family, and you are nothing. Miss of the Qin family. Qin Sheng laughed mockingly. She had never cared about this identity. 
she wanted to create her own glory in this life. Qin Xing went to the second floor and picked the room on the left. She packed up her things and began to think about her next plan. What she lacked the most now was money. She needed a large amount of start.up capital to start a company. It was not easy to get millions of dollars in a short period of time. Soon, she thought of a way. Stock market. The stock market could make people go bankrupt overnight. It could also make people become rich in a short period of time. Their wealth could increase by several times or even dozens of times. Qin Sheng was the god of stock in the eyes of the investors. She had never made a mistake in stock market. When the Qin Group's capital chain broke, she took the Qin family's remaining funds to the stock market. She increased the Qin family's capital by more than 10 times and saved the Qin family. Only, this credit was snatched away by Qin Churu. Chapter 4 Close You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. After thinking about it, Qin Xing began to write and draw on the paper. Trading in the stock market also required capital. She listed several ways to make money, and finally locked on to the last one. Just as she put down the pen and paper and didn't knock on the door, a servant came in. The sound of footsteps was very loud, and Qin Xing frowned unhappily. The servant threw a bunch of clothes and toiletries on the ground and said in a strange voice, These are your clothes and toiletries. Madam asked me to bring them over. After saying that, she walked out while mumbling, Do you really think you are a young Mississippi? You are waiting to be served the moment you come back. Through the conversation between Lin Shuya and Qin Hai over the past few days, it was obvious that they did not take Qin Xing seriously. Not to mention, Qin Xing went against Qin Hai the moment she came back. The servant was also a bully who was afraid of the strong. Therefore, she did not put Qin Xing in her eyes. Wait. Qin Xing turned around and narrowed her eyes to size up the maids. A small maid. In her previous life, in order to leave a good impression in front of Lin Shuya and Qin Hai, she was used to swallowing her anger. Those maids never treated her as a miss of the Qin family. The maid's attitude toward her could not be avoided by Qin Churu's instigation. In this life, she would not let herself suffer for some irrelevant people. Qin Xing sneered, Who are you to have such an attitude towards your employer? Although I just came back from the countryside, I am still a member of the Qin family. How can I let you, a mere servant, climb over my head? Tell me, if I tell Qin Hai about this, what will he do? Qin Xing's imposing manner made the servant instantly quiet down. A chill rose in her heart. When she met Qin Xing's cold eyes, her mind was filled with Qin Xing's words. For a moment, she had yet to react. Her heart was filled with anger towards Qin Sheng. She was just an unimportant thing. What right did she have to say such things about her? Even if she was the young miss of the Qin family. The servant's face suddenly froze. Her heart turned cold and her face turned pale. No matter what, Qin Sheng was still the biological daughter of the old master and madam. She was not valued and she was just a small servant. It was obvious which was more important. If Qin Xing reported her to the old master, she would definitely be fired. Thinking of this, the servant repeatedly apologized to Qin Xing in a low voice, Miss, it's my fault for not knowing what's good for me. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Qin Xing looked at the door of the room, the meaning in her eyes was very obvious. The servant heaved a sigh of relief and quickly left Qin Xing's room. Her legs were trembling, and she could not even walk properly. After the maid left, Qin Xing didn't even look at it. She threw the things that Lin Shuya had prepared for her into the trash can, washed up briefly, and then went to bed. Lying on the bed, Qin Xing didn't close her eyes for a long time. Thinking about everything that had happened today, she felt like she was in a dream. She never believed in ghosts and monsters, but it had indeed happened to her. She had a chance to do it all over again, and everything that she had lost could be salvaged. Brother Fu, Grandpa Lu. 
she would no longer be instigated by others and alienate them. Early the next morning, Qin Xin got up. Qin Churu had to go to school early because she had to go to class. When Qin Xin went downstairs, only Qin Hai and Lin Shuya were having breakfast. Qin Xin pulled out a chair and sat down at the dining table. Sheng Er, I will arrange for you to go to school tomorrow. Your countryside is not as good as H City. The teaching conditions in H City are better, and the standards of the students are also heaven and earth. No matter how good your results are in the countryside, you are still at the bottom of H City. Not to mention, your results are poor to begin with. Qin Hai did not have much hope for Qin Sheng. What could a person who grew up in the countryside have? Fortunately, his family had Churu, who had always been ranked in the top ten in the school. She had also asked Master Qi to learn how to draw, which had saved some face for him. Chapter 5 2000 Pocket Money You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Qin Sheng did not respond. She only picked up the bread and ate it leisurely. Lin Shuya did not care about her. I'm full. Qin Sheng ate a few pieces of bread and stood up from her seat. Qin Hai looked at Qin Sheng's clothes and frowned. He turned his head and asked Lin Shuya, You didn't prepare clothes for Sheng Er. Lin Shuya also frowned and said in confusion, I've already asked the maid to send them over. Qin Hai and Lin Shuya's eyes fell on Qin Sheng at the same time. Qin Sheng narrowed her eyes and thought for a moment. Then, she slowly opened her mouth and said, It's ugly. Those clothes were all picked by Qin Churu. She had seen Qin Sheng's photos and specially picked out some old and bulky clothes. In her previous life, because of this, Qin Sheng had always been ridiculed as a country bumpkin. Qin Hai and Lin Shuya did not dare to admit that Qin Sheng was their daughter outside. Lin Shuya's face darkened. Qin Sheng was indeed not as considerate and sensible as Roer. Sheng Er, since you don't like it, then go and pick a few things that you like. As Qin Hai said that, he took out a card and gave it to her. There are two thousand dollars in it. Qin Hai felt that he had already fulfilled a father's responsibility by giving Qin Sheng 2,000 yuan. Qin Sheng had grown up in the countryside and had never seen so much pocket money. She would definitely be very touched. Qin Sheng did not take it. She only asked with a slight mocking tone, Qin Churu also has 2,000 yuan as pocket money. 20,000 Qin Hai did not hide anything. Dad, as your biological daughter, can't she be compared to your adopted daughter? Qin Sheng emphasized the word dad very heavily. This was the first time she had called him dad since her rebirth. She had already repaid their kindness in her previous life. In this life, she would not make any compromises because of them. She would take back everything that should be hers. As soon as she finished speaking, Lin Shuya jumped out. Qin Sheng, how can you compare to Roer? Roer has many friends, so she naturally has many places that need to spend money. You just came back from the countryside, so why would you need to spend money? Qin Sheng ignored Lin Shuya and only looked at Qin Hai indifferently. The smile on Qin Hai's face was about to be broken. Being stared at by Qin Sheng, his heart was filled with embarrassment. He changed his words and said, I wasn't thoughtful. Sheng Er, you will have the same pocket money as Roer in the future. Qin Sheng had no intention of letting Qin Hai go. How much pocket money did Qin Churu receive in the past 18 years? Qin Sheng. Lin Shuya's face was livid with anger. Do you want to take all of Roer's things away? If it wasn't for the change of identity, Qin Churu would have become what you call a country bumpkin. Everything she enjoys now doesn't belong to her in the first place, so why would I want to take it away? Qin Xing sneered and asked Qin Hai, Dad, I think you won't mistreat your biological daughter. Qin Hai was someone who cared about his face. He wasn't short of money, so he immediately said, I'll give you 200,000 first. I'll save the rest for your dowry. Lin Shuya felt her heart ache when she heard that. 
Qin Sheng was only a high school student. Giving her money would only be a waste. Spending it on her was just a waste of money. Two hundred thousand could buy several sets of clothes for Roar. Lin Shia wanted to stop Qin Hai, but she was glared at by Qin Hai and reluctantly withdrew her hand. Her already bad impression of Qin Sheng was even worse. Lin Shuya secretly rejoiced in her heart. Fortunately, she had carried the wrong child back then. Otherwise, Qin Churu would not have become her daughter. Qin Sheng took the card and put it into his pocket. 200,000 was not much, but Qin Hai would not give her more money. After a simple breakfast, Qin Sheng took the bank card and went out. Before she knew it, she walked to a villa. Chapter 6 Her in the dream you are listening at novel full dot audio. Grandpa Lu, Brother Fu Qin Sheng's eyes turned red as she looked at the villa behind the iron bars. They were the people who had truly treated her well in this world, but she had let them down. It was not until her death that Fu Hanchuan's painful cries rang in her ears that she truly understood. Fortunately, she had a chance to do it all over again. Qin Xing did not knock on the door and enter. She only stayed outside for an hour. When she left, a car passed by her. Qin Xing's figure flashed past, and a familiar figure appeared in Fu Hanchuan's mind. He slammed on the brakes, opened the car door, and ran out. However, Fu Hanchuan looked for a long distance, but he did not see the figure he saw. Fu Hanchuan could not help but pinch the space between his eyebrows. It seemed that he was hallucinating. She was just a woman who appeared in his dream. She did not exist in reality. Fu Hanchuan got into the car, started it up again, and drove back to the villa. When Grandfather Lu saw Fu Hanchuan, he blew on his beard. Fu Hanchuan, have you sent someone to look for her? Fu Hanchuan slowly rolled up his sleeves, took the scissors from Grandfather Lu, and trimmed the tall grass. There will be news in the next two days. Grandfather Lu was satisfied, the first time I saw that girl, I really liked her. One look and I knew she was good. If it weren't for her, my old bones would have been buried. Hanchuan, when you see her, you can't be cold and scare the little girl. His grandson was good in everything but he was too cold and didn't care about anything. His personality was similar to that girl's. Thinking of this, old master Lu's eyes lit up. He looked Fu Hanchuan up and down and stroked his beard thoughtfully. His grandson was much older than her, but he would dote on her when he was older. She was good dot looking, and his grandson wasn't bad either. They could be a good match. The more he thought about it, the more he felt that it was possible. He nodded repeatedly and said, Han Chuan, remember to bring her home when you find her. Fu Han Chuan's hand paused and he frowned. He did not feel much rejection in his heart. After Qin Xing left the Gu family villa, she first went to buy a few sets of clothes. Then, she went to the computer city to buy a computer and then a mobile phone. When she returned to the Qin family, no one cared about her. Lin Shuya and Qin Hai stayed in the room. When Qin Churu saw Qin Sheng, her eyes were filled with contempt and she did not say a word. Qin Sheng was also happy and at ease. After closing the door, she turned on her computer and logged onto the hacker's website. The Hacker Empire, or Black Emperor for short. Black Emperor gathered hacker experts from all over the world and was divided into two parts. One was a forum for hackers to chat on, and the other was a competition arena. It was similar to a game, but the difference was. The target of the attack was either virtual or a direct attack on a real dot life network. In her previous life, Qin Sheng had also discovered this website by chance, so she did not pay too much attention to it. After registering her account, Qin Sheng posted a battle post. QS. Challenge. 10,000 US dollars once. Her tone was cold. After waiting for 10 minutes, there was still no response. Qin Sheng logged out of the website, opened the financial website, and began to check the stock market. 
The mouse swiped, and page after page flashed past. Qin Xing read very quickly, and very quickly, she finished flipping through the stocks that were now listed. Qin Xing's delicate brows furrowed slightly. What she pursued were high returns. These stocks were not very good choices. Her fingertips tapped on the mouse lightly, and the computer changed to the pages of the stocks that were about to be listed. Qin Xing patiently browsed through them one by one. When she saw the last stock, her gaze froze. Chapter 7 Go to class for you are listening at novelfull.audio She had heard of this stock in her previous life. The market had just opened, and unlike other newly dot listed stocks, the stock price had fallen like a precipice. For a time, it had fallen to the price of cabbage. The stock investors sold off one after another. This stock had reached the point where no one wanted it. However, three days later, the company threw out a big piece of news. The stock price instantly soared. In just a short week, it had risen more than 18 times. Qin Xing supported her chin with her hand, and the corners of her lips curled up into a smile. There was still a week before the stock was listed. She could use this time to raise the capital. Black Emperor was the fastest way for her to earn money. The next day, Qin Sheng was brought to H City High School. In the office, the class teacher and grade teacher were arguing until their faces were red and their necks were thick. I don't care. I don't agree to let Qin Sheng join our class. I don't want rat poop to spoil the whole pot of porridge. She received a bonus every year. Qin Sheng, a poor student who came back from the countryside, would lower the average score of their class and delay her bonus. She would never allow such a situation to happen. Teacher Liang, student Qin Sheng is a promising talent. The grade teacher also had a terrible headache. The Qin family donated a gym to the school. They had specifically asked Qin Sheng to join class 1. The principal had given this task to him. H City High School had four classes in grade 3. Class 1 to class 4, class 1 was the best, and class 4 was the worst. For the sake of face, Qin Hai naturally hoped that Qin Sheng could stay in the best class. Liang Hua snorted coldly, but still did not agree. She sat on the chair and no longer paid attention to the grade director. She took out her phone and casually swiped it. The grade director rubbed the space between his eyebrows. His headache was getting worse. At this moment, Qin Xin walked in. She was still wearing simple jeans, white T-dot shirts, and a jacket, but her entire person seemed to be emitting a dazzling light. The grade director was stunned for a moment and shouted, Student Qin Xin. Director, I'm not going to class one. The grade director looked at Qin Xin in surprise. Class 1 was the best class. Everyone was trying their best to get in, but this was the first time someone had suggested not going to class 1. Liang Hua snorted coldly, displeased with Qin Xing even more. It was one thing for her to reject Qin Xing entering class 1, but for Qin Xing to suggest not going to class 1 on her own accord, wasn't that equivalent to throwing her face on the ground and stepping on it. Why, the grade director asked. Qin Xing narrowed her eyes slightly and looked at Teacher Liang. In her previous life, when she had entered Class 1, Liang Hua had made things difficult for her everywhere. Because of Qin Churu's pleas, she had deliberately concealed her results. Every time, she had scored a zero in the exam, filled in the multiple dot choice questions, filled in the blanks, and never did any other questions. After every exam, Liang Hua would use her results to humiliate her in front of the entire class. Qin Churu was also in class 1. She did not wish to have to compete with Liang Hua and Qin Churu in terms of intelligence and courage during the year of the third year of high school. Qin Xing retracted her gaze and replied indifferently, My results are not worthy of teacher Liang's class. Liang Hua was so angry that her face turned red. However, she had said this before and could not refute it. The grade teacher did not agree immediately. He was still in a difficult position. 
After all, Qin Sheng could not represent Qin Hai. Qin Sheng continued, on his side, I will talk to him. Teacher can make whatever arrangements he wants. The grade teacher looked at Qin Sheng with admiration and gratitude. He turned his head and glanced at the other three class teachers who were sitting in their seats. Which one of you is willing to let Qin Sheng join your class? When the class teachers of class 2 and class 3 heard this, they lowered their heads in unison. No one was willing to let a poor student like Qin Sheng join their class. This would affect the average grade of the entire class and even the enrollment rate. Chapter 8 New Classmate, You Are Very Arrogant You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Only Class 4's form teacher, Teacher Lin, stood up. She was a doctoral student who had just graduated two years ago. This year was her first year as a form teacher. She had always been isolated by the other three form teachers in the office. Pushing her glasses, Teacher Lin asked gently, Student Qin Sheng, would you like to join our class four? Qin Sheng nodded. Class four, I'll go. All right, student Qin Sheng will go to class four. The grade teacher nodded in satisfaction. Come with me to go through the enrollment procedures now. As soon as Qin Sheng and the grade teacher left, teacher Liang said disdainfully, picking up all kinds of junk. The other two grade teachers were also mocking teacher Lin. Teacher Lin, if you take in Qin Sheng, I'm afraid the average score of your class will be lowered by a lot. Dot, teacher Chen, what you said is wrong. Class 4 is the worst class. The poor students are gathered together. One more Qin Sheng isn't much, and one less Qin Sheng isn't much. It's all the same. Dot. Lin Laoshi lowered her head and corrected the assignments earnestly. She circled the mistakes made by the students one by one and added notes. The few teachers didn't receive any response. Feeling bored, they went about their own business. After completing the admission procedures, Qin Sheng and Teacher Lin entered class 4 together. The Chinese teacher who was in class nodded and left the classroom. When they saw Teacher Lin, the noisy class 4 instantly quieted down. Don't look at how weak Teacher Lin was. In fact, she was even scarier than the disciplined teacher. Every once in a while, a student would be invited to the office to drink tea. When they came back, they were all terrified when they mentioned Teacher Lin. As soon as Teacher Lin appeared, they became obedient students. Soon, they noticed that the young girl beside Teacher Lin was standing quietly at the side. She seemed to be a shining body, naturally becoming the center of the crowd. After a brief introduction to Qin Sheng, Teacher Lin left. Qin Sheng sat in her seat with one hand supporting her chin and the other hand casually flipping through her textbook. Her expression was lazy. She studied science. As long as she wanted to, she could get full marks in mathematics, biology, chemistry, and physics. However, she was very biased in her subjects, so it was normal for her to fail Chinese. However, she had never been willing to admit defeat. In her previous life, she spent a lot of effort to learn Chinese. Now, Chinese could be said to be her best class. The Chinese teacher was lecturing on the podium. Qin Xing's eyelids became heavier and heavier. Soon, she fell into a deep sleep on the desk. She had not been in class for five to six years. Now that she was in class, it was as if she was listening to a monk reciting scriptures. It was normal for the students of class four to sleep, and the teacher could not control them. Basically, they turned a blind eye to the sleeping students. Qin Sheng was not disturbed throughout the entire class. The Chinese class was over very quickly. The bell for the end of class rang, and Qin Sheng woke up as well. Bang, bang. A boy with a buzz cut walked up to Qin Sheng and knocked on her desk loudly. Qin Sheng glanced at him lightly. What's the matter? Lin Feng's temper flared up. New classmate, you're very cocky. He was the boss of this class. As soon as Qin Sheng appeared, his sense of danger immediately rose. 
he felt that his boss position was no longer secure. Although Qin Sheng's looks were stunning and matched the standards of his dream goddess. He still did not like this Qin Sheng, both inside and outside. Qin Sheng retracted her gaze and opened her textbook. Chapter 9 See you at the basketball court you are listening at novel full dot audio. Dot. Does he, Lin Feng, really look so weak? He glanced at Qin Sheng from head to toe, but Qin Sheng didn't even give him a glance. Smoke was coming out of Lin Feng's head. If Qin Sheng was a man, he would have beaten her to the ground, but she was a woman. No matter how much he messed around, he wouldn't do anything to a woman, not to mention that this woman was pretty decent. Looking. Lin Feng clenched his fists and coughed lightly. Student Qin, you just entered class 4. As a new member, do you know what to do? I know. Qin Sheng stood up. Lin Feng nodded in satisfaction. Not bad, she knew some rules. However, the next second, he heard Qin Sheng say. Be nov calm, let's have a competition. You can do whatever you want with the questions. If you lose, you can't disturb me anymore. Lin Feng. Dot. The other students of class 4. Dot. The classroom was silent for a few seconds before bursting into laughter. Brother Feng, I'm afraid that something is wrong with my ears. What did I hear? F asterisk CK, this new chick is really hot. Qin Sheng, for the sake of your pretty face, let me remind you that Brother Feng is unbeatable in the entire school. Think carefully before you act. Don't cry later. Lin Feng was also laughing so hard that his body was shaking. He held his stomach and said, Student Qin, your small arms and legs will break if I twist them. Don't come up here to be abused. Also, I'm a gentleman. I don't hit girls. Don't talk nonsense. Qin Xing frowned impatiently. She took a step forward and grabbed Lin Feng's wrist. With a twist, a male voice screamed. Tears streamed down Lin Feng's face like a man. The students who were watching the show took a step back in unison. Looking at Lin Feng, they all felt pain. Qin Sheng had been beaten up when she was young. When she went back and told her parents, they scolded her in return. Qin Sheng no longer had any hope. She could only rely on herself. As expected, when others hit her, she would hit them back. She was also a strong person. Basically, not many people were her opponents. There were a few times when she beat them up and sent them to the hospital. In primary school, junior high school, and the high school that she used to stay in, her reputation as the little tyrant was resounding. Qin Sheng was not someone who was willing to be wronged. She came to class for naturally because she did not want to see other people's expressions. As for the relationship between classmates, she did not care. She was already used to being alone. Lin Feng's tears fell. This was really too f asterisk king painful. Qin Sheng's expression was indifferent. She twisted Lin Feng's wrist again. The surrounding students of class for who were watching the show only heard a soft kacha sound. Lin Feng's originally dislocated wrist was fixed, accompanied by Lin Feng's wailing and screaming. F asterisk CK. Lin Feng, who had been freed, was burning with anger. He did not care about the principle of boys not hitting girls anymore. He wanted to teach Qin Sheng a lesson. He reached out his hand and wanted to grab Qin Sheng's shoulder. F asterisk CK woman, F asterisk CK his gentleman. However, in the next second. Bang. Lin Feng fell to the ground. Qin Xing calmly retracted her foot and sat back down. Brother Feng. The few underlings were stunned for a moment and quickly helped Lin Feng up. A light bulb appeared on Lin Feng's forehead. He held his forehead and stood up unsteadily. He let out a heavy breath. At this moment, the bell for class rang. It was teacher Lin's class again. Lin Feng pointed at Qin Sheng and said through gritted teeth, school ends at noon. 
see you at the basketball court. He wanted to teach this woman a good lesson and let her know who was the boss. Teacher Lin entered the classroom and Qin Sheng naturally fell asleep on the table. The girls behind stared at Qin Sheng with red hearts in their eyes. How handsome! Chapter 10 Competition You are listening at NovelFull.audio The girls in front also turned their heads from time to time. Even some of the boys almost called Qin Sheng Daddy. Who among the boys didn't have a martial arts dream? Previously, the one they admired the most was Lin Feng because he was good at fighting. Now, Qin Sheng had already defeated Lin Feng twice. The boys had no moral integrity and leaned towards Qin Sheng. Whoever was good would be their boss. Teacher Lin, who was copying a math question, turned around and saw Qin Sheng sleeping. Her eyes were half dot closed as she adjusted her glasses. A piece of chalk landed accurately on Qin Sheng's desk. Student Qin Sheng, come up and solve this question on the blackboard. Qin Sheng did not respond, probably because she was asleep. Qin Sheng's deskmate was a round dot faced girl with some baby fat on her face. She looked very cute, so she quickly shook Qin Sheng awake. Qin Sheng raised her head. Her sleepy eyes were a little drowsy. She didn't react for a moment. What's the matter? Teacher asked you to go up and do the questions. Huang Xiaoyan covered her heart. She was almost blown away by Qin Xing's contrast of cuteness. Thank you. Qin Xing nodded and walked up to the podium. She held the chalk and frowned at the question. Seeing that Qin Xing didn't start to answer for a long time, Teacher Lin turned around and began to explain, this is the 21st question of the college entrance exam five years ago. It's the most difficult question. It's okay if you can't solve it. This time, I asked this sleeping classmate to come up and answer it to remind you. Teacher Lin turned around and wanted to point at Qin Sheng. When she saw the content on the blackboard, she was instantly stunned. Dil Viko she held her glasses and said, Now, let's see if Qin Sheng's answer is correct. Teacher, can I go back to my seat now? Qin Sheng asked. Go ahead. Teacher Lin waved her hand as she looked at the answer on the blackboard. After watching the entire process, Teacher Lin's mouth opened slightly. She asked in surprise, Student Qin Sheng, have you studied any university courses? This question was used to test a student's ability to comprehensively apply knowledge during the three years of high school. There were many steps and it was very difficult. If one used university mathematics knowledge to solve it, it would be easy to understand. Qin Sheng used university mathematics to complete it. Although teacher Lin's high mathematics score was also very high, she had never thought of using this method to solve this question. I've learned a little. Qin Sheng had almost forgotten most of her high school knowledge. She only remembered part of the university knowledge. This question was answered perfectly. Student Qin Sheng, pay attention next time. You must listen carefully in class. The students of class 4 looked at Qin Sheng in surprise. Some of them were good at math, but they didn't expect Qin Sheng to solve it so quickly. And she was using the knowledge of the university. Wasn't Qin Sheng a bad student? Teacher Lin erased Qin Sheng's answer from the blackboard. It was high school now, so the students didn't need to learn knowledge outside of the syllable. After giving some time for the students to answer, Teacher Lin began to explain. Teacher Lin prepared the lesson seriously, and the class was interesting and lively. Even the students in class for who did not like to learn could not help but immerse themselves in it. Qin Sheng did not feel sleepy anymore. The class quickly passed. At noon, Qin Sheng arrived at the basketball court as scheduled. All the students in class 4 had arrived. Standing in the middle of the basketball court, Lin Feng twirled the basketball with his fingertips. Then, he threw the basketball up and accurately entered the basketball hoop. Lin Feng nodded in satisfaction and looked at Qin Sheng again. He crossed his arms and said in a tone that deserved a beating, Qin Sheng, you can find any helpers you want. 